all. That weather is going to be downright dangerous at some of these games this weekend. I think uh, Mother Nature is favored to win all those games. Yeah, Mother Nature undefeated yeah. in all sports at all times. It is going to be brutal at a couple of these games, which will make for interesting viewing, if nothing else. I want to bring in our virtual reality globe here to talk about the setup of what is going to happen. And I've highlighted on the globe the coldest of the cold air that's already started to make a break down from the Arctic and Canada into the northern tier of states uh, across the U.S. Now watch what happens as we wind the clock forward from right now all the way through the weekend, and we are going to be seeing that air making more of a push through the middle of the country, really spilling down almost to the Gulf Coast, and that's going to have big implications on the weather for some of these NFL games. Specifically, we will start with the first game chronologically of what's going to be happening in Kansas City. Let's step over to the monitor here and take a look at that part of the forecast. Temperature there, negative. It is going to be below zero at kickoff at 7 o'clock local time, central time in Kansas City, and getting even colder, likely to register as the fourth coldest postseason game in NFL history. And the weather in Buffalo on Sunday, we carry that game here on CBS. Can't wait to watch this one. It's going to be chaos because that same cold air mass spilling over the open waters of the Great Lakes is going to result in a significant lake effect snow event. It is going to be windy and snowy. Temperatures are going to be in the low 20s. It'll feel like zero and around Orchard Park, New York, where the Bills call home, they're expecting anywhere from 18 to 24 inches of snow to accumulate during the course of the system. But four to eight inches is going to probably add up during the course of that game. So some real chaos for folks who like to watch the weather's impact on sports. Let's talk about our weather because we have rain on the way this weekend. Next storm starting to approach, beginning to send some moisture already towards the northern coast of California and on the first alert down loop. You can see some showers trying to make a run towards the North Bay. Those have largely been falling apart on the way down. A little bit of shower activity may be hitting the ground now in Solano County. More rain lining up farther upstream and Futurecast does a good job of depicting the evolution of that as we head through this evening. Best chance of showers is going to be north of the Golden Gate as we head through the evening hours. And then a better chance of rain starting to spread out as we head towards early tomorrow morning. But still the North Bay is going to have the most widespread shower activity initially. Two bands of rain, light to moderate rain is going to move across most of the Bay Area as we head from morning into early afternoon. A brief little break in the action, not going to stop raining entirely, but there will be plenty of gaps in between the downpours. That's going to be replaced by mid afternoon into the evening hours with a wave of heavier rain. This is the heaviest rain. It'll be accompanied by the gustiest winds that starts diving in by about sunset, five o'clock for the North Bay, about seven o'clock. It's going to be moving into San Francisco, Oakland and inland parts of the East Bay and then diving down into the Santa Clara Valley and moving out fairly quickly. That's going to limit the overall potential for any significant flooding, the fast movement of this system. But we are talking about some decent rainfall totals overall. Here are the estimates from that same forecast model showing anywhere from a half an inch to an inch of rain on a widespread basis. It's showing more than one inch of rain for downtown San Francisco. That's possible, but I think we're more likely going to settle in around that nine tenths, maybe one inch of total rainfall. And there are going to be some fluctuations with what various communities receive out of the system. But overall, it's just flood prone and poor drainage areas are going to have any potential for high water concerns. The winds are going to pick up as we head through the day already noticeable by noon, but the strongest winds are going to accompany that burst of heavier rain starting to move into the North Bay and dropping towards the Golden Gate by early evening evening and then across more of the Bay Area as we head through Saturday evening and Saturday night. 25 to 35 mile an hour gusts are going to be possible. Combine that with the rain and there's a potential for some sporadic power outages and a little bit of tree damage, but the winds are going to calm down just as quickly as the rain moves out. The winds are going to calm down by early Sunday morning. And this is going to be another snowmaker for the Sierra winter storm warning in effect through Saturday night, 10 to 15 inches of snow on a widespread basis. But some of the peaks are going to pick up closer to two feet of total snowfall. It is going to be a mess on US 50 and on I-80. So to keep that in mind, if you were trying, planning to head up that direction, strongly discouraged until we get to about midday on Sunday. Right now, well, it's pretty sunset while we're waiting on all that to arrive. Temperatures are in the low to mid 50s right now. And as we look at the seven day forecast, we are going to see really not much variation to the those daily temperatures as we head through the entire seven day outlook until we get to the middle and end of next week. So the whole seven day forecast has a couple of rain chances. The good rain chance prompting tomorrow's first alert weather day with rain and wind Saturday and then lighter showers in the forecast for the middle of next week, followed by a little bit of a warm up in the forecast by Thursday and Friday of next week. A little bonus towards the tail end of the seven day outlook.